All right, let's talk about micro segmentation. My name is Tony Burke and I am a instructor. I teach many different topics ranging from networking and server administration all the way to skydiving. And today we're going to talk about micro segmentation. So what is micro segmentation? It is a more granular control of security rules for hosts. So what does that mean? It helps talk about what the current status is for most environments, and we call that macro segmentation. Actually, most people don't call it that. I call it that macro segmentation. It seems a natural segmentation. It seems a natural uh, difference there. So what's the difference between macro segmentation and micro segmentation? So what is a segment? A segment is typically either a layer two or layer three construct, or even a more than that, it could be just purely a logical construct. A way to segment some hosts from other hosts or some endpoints from other endpoints. And macro segmentation, which is what we've had for many years, we uh, in a typical enterprise will have a large VLAN. And that VLAN will have many hosts on it. Some of them are related to each other, many of them are not. It doesn't really matter. We have a firewall protecting them typically. So we have a firewall at the perimeter. And it protects our north and south traffic. That's one of the terms we use for this type of traffic. And our east and west traffic here, east and west, is completely unregulated. There's no protection from one host to another host. So if one host gets compromised, it can be used as a jumping off point to other hosts and, uh, and many other uh, possibilities. So that's what we have with macro segmentation. It's not very granular. Uh, and, and this is the way that we do it in, in most cases. So from a general perspective, and here is where different vendors and different people, and this is where reasonable people can disagree on this terminology, but generally speaking, um, macro segment or micro segmentation is, is somewhat similar. We may still have a perimeter firewall. And I'll tell you why a little bit later, why we have a still have a perimeter firewall in micro segmentation. We still have the same number of hosts potentially, or even more because micro segmentation tends to be used in environments uh, where endpoints are more short lived, pets and cattle and all that. But we also have this additional barrier. We have these micro segments where related hosts have their own mini perimeter. And that perimeter can encompass one host or one endpoint or many endpoints, or um, it really doesn't matter. Uh, but they are related in function. So they might be a cluster, they might be an application, they might be tiers in an application. Uh, and the, we can put in specific security rules to protect going from one segment to another. So we've got a lot more granular control and what that segment may have access to the outside world or what a segment may have to a backend connection through a VPN or something going to like AWS uh, uh, or whatever. We, we, in, we get much more granular control over this. So where does this enforcement happen? Well, one place it cannot happen is it's not gonna happen at the firewall, at least a traditional firewall. It's just not, we would have to force all traffic in and out of that firewall and it probably wouldn't scale well. It may not look that great. And also those firewalls just aren't built for this type of granularity. Oh, one other thing. Um, we can also enforce rules with inside of a segment so that we can have rules that govern the communications of endpoints inside of a given segment. Sometimes we might call that um, nano segmentation or if we have several hosts protected by a perimeter, we might call that mini segmentation and then the rules that govern host to host communication might be considered micro segmentation either way i'm just going to all i'm just going to label all of this under micro segmentation now the trick with micro segmentation 
we'll get back to our macro segment here and more hosts. They could be containers, they could be virtual machines, they could be bare metal systems, it really doesn't matter. And we've got our perimeters. Again, a perimeter might encompass many virtual machines, it may encompass just, or many hosts, it may just encompass one host. Doesn't really matter. So we can't do the enforcement on a traditional firewall. So this firewall is typically a one or two RU device. It's sitting on in a rack somewhere. And it's the firewall construct that we've known for the past 20 years. It's not really well placed and not really geared well to do this um, micro segmentation enforcement. So where do we do this enforcement? Well, there's a couple places we can do it. We can do it on the hosts. Host-based firewalls have been around for a long time, but the secret sauce in host-based firewalls is we needed a centralized controller in order to manage all of these relationships. Now, think about this. I, I've just got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I've got 14 roughly hosts here, and I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 different segments. And I'm going to have specific rules from one segment to another and one segment to another and one segment to another and then outside and then inside of a segment as well. I might have some additional rules. That's really a lot to manage from a host basis. So we have, if we have a central controller that's beaming out that control, we can control the host based firewalls. So for Linux, it might be IP tables or rather net filter, and then for Windows, it might be Windows Firewall. So we could potentially enforce it on the host, but we're gonna need a controller to do this. In fact, all of these really require a controller. The next place we can do it is on the switch. Now we've had the ability to enforce something like this in switches for a while. We could do things like um, private VLANs and secondary VLANs and isolated secondary VLANs. But generally speaking, logistically, it's just too many changes, too many rules to keep track of reliably. So again, we go back to the controller. So really for any micro segmentation style platform, we need some sort of controller. Um, one such product might be ACI, because ACI does have a centralized controller. The macro segment in ACI, we would call a bridge domain, and the micro segments we would call uh, EPGs, and then inside of an EPG, we call them actually micro EPGs if we want to put in roles to govern communications and endpoints inside of that. Um, we can also enforce it on the vSwitch, and probably the most notable platform that supports that would be VMware's NSX. And to a lesser extent, we can also, not to a lesser extent, but to another extent, we can also do AVE or AVS from Cisco with AC, which is a component of ACI. The AVE being the user space uh, virtual switch and the AVS being the more traditional kernel space virtual switch. So we have different ways to enforce this, um, enforce these forwarding rules. We can't really do it at a traditional firewall, but we can do it with Host-based firewalls, um, for example, Cisco has a solution. Uh, Tetration has an enforcement ability, has an enforcement option. On the, on the switch itself with Cisco ACI, um, also other platforms have that ability uh, to enforce this. I just happen, I'm, I'm an ACI instructor, so I, I'm more familiar with ACI than I am with the other platforms, but certainly ACI is not the only platform that can do this. And from a virtual switch perspective, we can do it on NSX, we can do it on AVE and, AV, and AVS. We could also do it on Open vSwitch um, with, uh, with um, uh, OpenStack. Uh, we can also do it in Kubernetes. So there's many different platforms that we can do this. The one thing that they all have in common for the, um, for the most part is that they have a centralized controller, a single point of truth in order to maintain all of these various relationships that grow exponentially as our networks become more complex, the, the relationships become more complex. We can't do it on a host by host basis. We can't do it on a switch by switch basis and we can't do it on a V switch by V switch basis. So that's a quick introduction to micro segmentation from a generic perspective. Hope this, uh, I hope you find this video useful. 
Um, and again, my name is Tony Burke. You can find me on Twitter at tburke at T-B-O-U-R-K-E. Um, and also on this YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.